Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. The amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of the Father, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our online worship service. I am Japar Kasho of Grace Communion Baguio. It is with great joy and privilege to be able to have the opportunity to share and deliver the message that God has for each and every one of us today. This Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Easter preparation, or commonly called as Lent. In the season of Lent, we take this opportunity to remember and reflect the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me start by asking you a question. Would you recall a moment or a time when you have broken something inside your house by accident or like when you were playing as a young kid and suddenly you hit the picture frame and was broken? Or would you also remember how you have felt or how your parents reacted? Let me tell you my story. I remember when I was young, while we were playing with my cousins in our family house, yes, inside the house, using the jumping rope. And suddenly, the rope hit the light bulb. And the debris of the light bulb was on the floor. This was a time when my cousins and I started to panic and worry. Because of two reasons. First, is that since I was the eldest at that time, I know that I was responsible to what happened. And second reason is that I know that our parents are arriving soon. I was so nervous how our parents would react or respond to what happened. To my surprise, when my parents arrived and they get to know what happened, it was not the way that I was expecting. More than the broken light bulb, they were first concerned with our safety. They asked the question like, were you hurt or are you okay? In this situation, brothers and sisters, I realized that there is no reason for me personally to worry, panic, or be fearful towards my parents. Because sometimes, these experiences get carried over to our relationship with God in both the lies and truth about who God is as our Father and who we are in relation to Him as His sons and His daughters. It is my prayer that in our message that we get to know and experience more about God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and our relationship with Him as His sons and his daughters. The Gospel reading for today in the Revised Common Lectionary is taken from the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 verses 1 to 3 and 11 to 32. We will be looking at one of the common parables of Jesus, the parable of the prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15, this was just one of the many parables that Jesus has taught. Like we have the parable of the lost ship, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the prodigal son. Or if I may use the term or the title, the parable of the lost son. There is a common theme in these parables. It is about God's heart for the lost, always for the lost. And who are the audience or the hearers as Jesus taught these parables that time? It was mentioned in Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 3 from the New Revised Standard Version. Let us read. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. We can have this context in our hearts as we go through the parable today. Indeed, we are lost and was found because of His grace. And it is always God's heart to find the lost, to rescue and save the lost. We can have a lot of perspectives with the difference of the characters 
in the story, but today we'll be focusing on the Father. The heart of the Father in the parable that speaks about our Heavenly Father. If you'd want to have a title of our message today, the title is The Heart of Our Father. The Heart of Our Father. The three facets of the Father's heart are the following. There are three things that we'd be emphasizing today. First is the Father's compassion. Second is the Father's confession. And the third is the Father's celebration. Let us read Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 20 from the New Revised Standard Version. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would have gladly filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. In this first section, we are going to consider the compassion of the father. The son who was previously asked for his share of his inheritance, and the father has granted it to him. The son went to go live it up and spend all that he has. That is, until the money runs out and the fun is over. He then finds employment during the most degrading job a Jew could imagine, and that is to feed the pigs, which were better fed than he was. And that's not saying much. Having reached the end of his rope, he decides to come home, but he feels great shame and unworthiness at the same time. Having run out of options, he feels that maybe his father would accept him back as a servant on his property. You can read here that he was already saying what would be probably his job was when he returns to his father. One thing that we need to understand is that a son who asked for his share of the inheritance was essentially saying to his father, I wish you were dead. This was, would have been unthinkable and he would have been scandalized their family in front of the whole village. And I know that you can relate to this because in our culture, it is also unusual for us to receive or to get the inheritance or pamana already while the giver is still alive. In fact, a father was expected to shun a child that asked for such outrageous request for all intents and purposes, that his son was now considered dead. In the event of the son's return, it was likely that the people of his town saw him coming. Knowing the disgrace and shame he has caused his father, it is likely he would have been treated harshly upon his return. But when we see the father in the story, the father sees the son from far off. Perhaps he is seeing a commotion. Or perhaps the father has been keeping an eye out for him the whole time as he would return. We don't know. 
what we do know is that he takes off running, most likely with his robes lifted past his knees, a shameful way for a man to expose himself. Suddenly, the sun is no longer the focal point, and it is the very scandal of the father's running, an exposure of skin that's hide the, that hides the shame of the prodigal. The father would rather bear the shame than to see it upon his son. I'd want us to take time to imagine this scene right now. The father waiting for the son, and when he saw his son, even far off, he started running towards the son. The father likely knew what kind of condition his prodigal son could have been in, and he responded with compassion. Similarly, brothers and sisters, God saw humanity distancing itself from him. He saw our lostness, our guilt, and our shame, and had compassion on us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, we read, While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As well as in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away, have been brought near through the blood of Christ. He took our shame and nailed it to the cross. That is the extravagant love of the father towards his sons and his daughters, even as it was pictured in this parable. Now let us read Luke chapter 15, verses 21 to 22. Then the son said to the father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. In this section, we're going to look at the confession of the father. No, I did not say that incorrectly. Yes, we're looking at the confession of the Father. Did you notice that in verse 22, that it indicates that it wasn't the Father's attempt at confession that moved the heart of the Father? Well, the Son confessed that he has sinned against heaven and before the Father. But in fact, while the Son was confessing, he interrupts the son's bubbling, attempting at confessing. The son presupposes his disqualification as son, but the father throws him a party instead. Like my story earlier, he wasn't expecting that it was how his father responded to him returning to him. We see that the father even kisses his son, According to their customs, a kiss would have signaled a death to the past as well as approval. And in this story, when the father kissed the son, it is an imagery of the dead self of the son is already done. And now he's kissing him to say that I am welcoming you back, both of which the prodigal son received. The father has his best robe placed on the son, as well as his signet ring and a pair of shoes. In other words, his past identity as a barefooted slave was now past him. And the father confesses that his son is now, there are three uh, things here, and it was symbolized um, with the robe, the ring, and the shoes. The robe symbolizes that the son is now worthy of honor. The ring symbolizes that he is giving him the authority. And the shoes symbolizes the father giving him the freedom, a newfound freedom. 
Today, as God's children, we wear the robe of righteousness that is ours in Christ, and that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, which acts as our engagement ring to assure us that we will receive everything that He has promised for all of us. And that we are told by Apostle Paul in his writings that it is for freedom that we have been set free. So in this story, it is as if God as well is assuring us that He has given us the worth of honor, that we are worthy of honor, that He has given us the authority, and that He has given us His freedom. The Heavenly Father confesses about us being included in Christ. But my question is, do we know our place in Him? Or have we truly looked all that is ours being placed in Christ, that we are His beloved, that we are loved and that we are forgiven in Christ. I pray that even as the Father has stopped the Son and allowed Himself to confess to the Son the realities of His identity, that right now, as you're hearing these words, that you allow the Father to confess His love towards you, His loving presence towards you, and His assuring presence towards you. Let us read Luke chapter 15, verses 23 to 24. And get the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. In the last two verses, we are looking at the celebration of the Father. Now, if the party were supposed to just include his immediate family, then a goat would have sufficed quite nicely, or it was enough for them. But instead, we see that the father instructed his servants to kill a fattened calf. This would have fed the entire village. As Jesus pointed out to the Pharisees earlier in this chapter, in Luke chapter 15, verse 7, it says, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Just as the prodigal son being brought back to life was the cause of the father's celebration, in the same way our heavenly father rejoices over humanity being placed in the son of God. No, the heart of the Father is to see us truly live as who we are, as honored, favored, and free children of God. So this parable of the prodigal son, we get to know and experience more about the heart of our Father, the heart of our Heavenly Father. And let us summarize with this. First, the father was moved by compassion for the son. Rather than having his son bear shame and guilt, the father covers it up and places it on himself. Likewise, Jesus, who is the one with the father, goes to the cross in our place and takes our shame and guilt upon himself, fulfilling the father's compassion for us. Second is that despite the prodigal son's attempt at confession, it is the confession of the father welcoming his son fully back into the family that gets the attention. Though we are instructed to confess our sins, yes, it is not an attempt to get into God's good graces. We are already in because of Christ, who has confessed that we that he will draw all people to himself. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And lastly, the father celebrated the son's return in grand fashion. And in Christ, the heart of the father was pleased to welcome us into the great fellowship between the father, son, and spirit where the celebration will continue without end. And that's what we're looking forward when we get to celebrate 
our relationship, our union and communion with God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is our Heavenly Father, our Father who is always compassionate, the one who continually confesses to us our identity, the promises that He has for us, that He is the God who celebrates us and with us. It is my prayer that as we have received the good news, the gospel of who God is today, that we continue to allow His Spirit to remind us that we are loved by Him, we are honored by Him, and we are favored by God. We may be lost in some way or the other, but we can be reminded in this story that as the Holy Spirit draws us to the Father, that the Father first is the one waiting for us and is ready to run towards us. Let us pray. Our great God, our loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message, for the word that we received this morning. Continually remind us and allow us, Lord, to come to know you more and to receive your love for each and every one of us. In our lostness, in our rebellion, in our guilt and shame, thank you that you open your arms around us and you have expressed that love when you sent your son, Jesus Christ, not only to live with us, to die with us, and for us, and as well as for us to be resurrected, to have new life in you. Lord, we continue to pray for the people who may have felt lost. May they know and see that you are the God who is always willing to, to look for them, to save them, to rescue them of whatever they are facing. And may we be expressions of that love to others as well. As you give value to the lost ones. This is our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here is an invitation to the Lord's table. This is the table of Jesus Christ. It is made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been. For a long time or ever before, you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites you to be known and fed here. So the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, we remember. Let us partake. In the same manner, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. We remember. Let's drink. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this bread and cup representing our spiritual participation in the body and blood of Christ. United with us in our humanity, he has, in undying love and grace, taken us into the life he shares with you and the Holy Spirit. Help us know and believe in the communion that we have with you and with one another. We pray all things through the intercession of the Son and the Spirit, giving honor to you, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen.